Hello. Hey. How are you guys hey. doing? Hey. <laughs> hey. Well, we're not but let's go ahead and do our intro. Hello, Facebook. Hey, Periscope. Hey, hey YouTube. YouTube. Yes, yeah, so hello and everybody. Hey, viewers. <laughs> listen, guys. So listen. Okay, guys. So here we go. We have a great surprise for you guys today. Okay. We're gonna start off by saying that we're so excited to bring to our show our first celeb interview. She's a world-renowned singer, songwriter, model, and actress. Her career has spanned over three decades. She and her group in Vogue have had it on the billboards like My Loving, Hold On, giving him something he can feel in one of my personal days, Don't Let Go. Her group, Lucy Pearl, went platinum worldwide with Dance Tonight and my all-time favorite, Don't Mess With My Man. Okay. <laughs> her work has earned her several awards and nominations, including two American Music Awards, a Billboard Music Award, seven MTV Video Music Awards, and four Soul Train Music Awards. And let's not forget the seven Grammy nominations. And coming to the Ellen D Show, the one, the only, the queen, the original funky diva, Dawn Rose Robinson. Robinson. This is like a party, you guys. It oh, is. Oh, You're so welcome. Thank you, for, thank you for that wonderful and warm welcome. Oh my gosh. When I hear the list of stuff, I'm like, wow, we did a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. And let's not let's not forget to uh mention that before you left in Vogue, you sold over 28 million. 28 records, million right? records. That's right. Yes. That's exactly. amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Really, really, really and I left in '97, so it's sold even more since then. So yes. yeah, um, 28 million at that time. Yes, wow. that's amazing. Thank you guys. That is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So, Dawn, oh, how are you? I'm great. I am so good, Lala. I'm awesome. so good. I'm just. I cannot complain. There's so many blessings. So much good happening in my life. Um, before we came on and started recording um, on your platform. I was telling you guys that all of the platforms that I've done, so you guys are literally my 90th, yeah, my 90th interview. And I'm just oh, wow. saying, I'm blown away. Yeah. I'm That's sorry. amazing. I think, I think I have the Guinness Book of World Records for the <laughs> most interviews. I really do. If there's such a thing, I'm, I won. I'm it. I'm her. I won. I won. I won. <laughs> I'm so well, grateful because, award. <laughs> yes, exactly. I wish I had my little award. Thank you so much to the people, yes. people that made this happen, you know? <laughs> um, but every single platform that I've done leading up to where I'm at today with you guys has mm. been their own platform. So that to me tells me two things. They didn't sit around and wait. Some of them had their platforms before COVID yes. and all, the, all this debacle with going on with this COVID mess. but. Some of them had their platforms before that, and some of them did not, and they're just starting. They, they're like, oh, we have like 12 followers. And I'm like, it doesn't matter to me. Um, it doesn't have to be that I'm sitting down with Oprah. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. Ellen or any of these bigger platforms, Jimmy Fallon or you know, Jay Leno or, you know, those platforms are amazing. And they, they gave us uh, a, lot, a lot of, um, you know, it put us out to the public. It let the public know exactly what we're doing. And those platforms were wonderful. But you guys having me on your personal show means that you started your own platform. You didn't wait for someone mm. to tell you guys that you needed to do something or we'll give you the right to do something. You guys yes. started your own platform yourself. That is commendable. Yes. Thank so, you. Thank you, you so much, Dawn. That means a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You guys deserve it, and and you're welcome. And it also told me that during COVID, you guys got creative. Now, some of the, like I said, some people had their platforms ahead of time, but yeah. we've been had this for four part, years, actually. Say again. We've been had this for four years, actually. Four now. years, good for you guys. This is good. For this you is all. season four of the L and D show, and you're actually the opening of season four of our yes! show. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're both celebrating. You guys are my nine. Yes, yes. And, and but this is the thing too. Hold on, you guys. I'm sorry. This is the thing as well. 
I have typically to do all the interviews that I've done, the 90 interviews today being the 90th, it takes uh, a lot of people, like our manager sets up a interviews for us, um, an agency like William Morris or CAA or Universal, those are the ones yes. that usually set up the interviews for us. So the fact that I did this myself and set up all these interviews, but I'm like, now some of them I overlapped, <laughs> I overbooked and I'm like, Dawn, you gotta get it together. Um, but I learned to be self-sufficient. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yes. Good for you. Thank you so much. Thank we, you. Are proud of you. we are definitely proud of you. We are definitely Thank proud you of you. Thank you very much, you guys. I appreciate that in a big way. So, y'all have questions? Yep. I'm sure you have questions. There it is. Okay, so let's start from the beginning here, okay? Yeah. So, from my understanding, you've been singing since the age of two years old? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. My dad, my dad, my talent. Um, and he discovered that, you know, I was harmonizing with him. I wasn't just singing like a little girl would, but of course a little tiny voice, but he, he noticed that I was singing a particular note when I was singing with him. And this was a Beatles mm. song and this Beatles song happened to be, um, uh, Michelle, my bell. So it was, um, French. It's mostly in French. So, mm. you know, and he was like, is she really? And so he would turn it down. <laughs> He couldn't pause it because they didn't have that back then, but he was like listening and turn it down. And then I would look at him like, turn the music back up. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> exactly, what are you doing? And he ran in the house with me, probably under his arm and ran in the house and told my mom, she can sing. She's like, um, Johnny, two things. She's two years old, she can barely talk. So you tell me oh, she can sing. Gosh. Exactly, and he played the song in the house and she was like, Oh my, yeah, she heard it for herself. So after that, they continued to cultivate my music, especially my parents broke up when I was five. So like three years later and uh, my mom, I was always around my dad, but my mom was the one that really cultivated my singing voice. So she would buy any female artist that was out at the time, she would buy that artist. And she didn't even know who Mickey Howard was at the time, that was her first album. Yes. She bought it, Come Share My Love. She bought uh, Patrice Russian, you know, um, uh, Brenda Russell, I remember her bringing home that album. And it, so we lived in Connecticut. New London was two hours from New York, is two hours from New York. Mm. And we don't really have a New London, we didn't have a big station to play all the new music that was coming out. So the way we heard about music was she would just buy it. She would just buy it and play it. Um, and then I would learn the songs, Minnie Riperton, I was big on uh, Shaka Khan, yeah. Stephanie Mills. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So my dad would bring in the, the rock and roll side. And he would bring in Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Led Zeppelin. And Crosby, Stills, and Nash taught me a lot about harmonies as well. Even though they were guys, mm -hmm. I would learn they have some of the most beautiful harmonies in music. Till this day, they are just intricate. Their harmonies are gorgeous. Mm. Um, so I would listen to all of that. And I learned from all of that just to be who I am today as a part of, those artists are all a part of who I am as a singer. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. It's something you mentioned, um, harmonies, Don, because we were literally just talking last night and I was telling them that you guys in Vogue period was like my introduction to harmonizing. Wow. And like and if there's no harmony, I don't know what to do with it. Wow, oh my gosh, thank you. That's so amazing. So yeah, it's like amazing how how much I've learned from you and this is the first time I'm actually you know, face to face with you. And I've learned so much from you. You have oh, no idea. Oh, thank you. Tamar, no right? idea. Tamika. Uh, Tamika? What the heck? Tamika. <laughs> Where is Tamar from? Oh, my God. Bro, I don't know, girl. I like Tamar and her eating, but girl, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I, I mean, I'll take it as a compliment because Tamar is a little bit of everything, but... <laughs> She is. It's okay. Keep it going, girl. Keep it going. She's amazing. Exactly. But still, you are Tamika. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Tamika. Dawn. Wow. So, and and I can't see your name. So, you're far away. The um, the names are too far for me. So, probably yes. 17 times before the interview is over. But thank it's you okay. so much for that. Um, no, we've no gotten worries. that from other artists as well. Like, uh, Beyonce would always give us props. And anytime they did interviews when they first came out, she would always say, and Vogue, and Vogue, and Vogue. Um, yeah. Our harmonies and the way that we blended, our blend was even for us it was shocking at the audition because 
typically to get a blend like what we had, you would be have to be family, you know? Mm. It was always that way. So the fact that we had um, a, a, such a unique sound together and never had met each other before. I mean, Maxine and I met at a hair salon. She was braiding hair. I was getting my hair done, but we never saw each other. We sang a little bit that day, but we never sang and saw each other again until the interview, um, to, uh, audition. Wow. Um, and then wow. Cindy and Terry had worked together on Carl Lewis's project, but then they had never seen each other since then either. So it wasn't like we kept in touch and knew each other. And to have such a blend, the, the our voices were so well blended like Sister Sledge, which they're sisters, mm -hmm. point of sisters. Again, they're sisters. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the Andrew sisters, you can go back to the emotions like, those harmonies are so intricate because they're sisters. They're, they have a similar yeah. tone in their voices. Yeah, so the fact yeah. that we sounded so good off the bat was like, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. Absolutely. We were no, still, no. when I hear our voices today, I get a little emotional. Yes. I really do. And I know it sounds silly, but I get so like, oh, I miss them. Yeah, I man. Them. Like, I miss them. Of course, because we all created history together. Now, Dawn, yeah. is it true that you sung the highest part of the harmonies in Invoke? I didn't sing the highest. No, I sang one of the. So I was probably second soprano. Cindy and Terry shared the high soprano, first soprano. Mm -hmm. First soprano. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Second soprano. And okay. then Maxine was like alto. Um, she, she, she could sing higher, but they put her on the bottom because she can handle that much more than the rest of us. Mm, Got gotcha. okay. you, but she you were in more. Of, you were in more of the hits. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was, <laughs> you know. You know. You know. Ding. Hello. No. No so shade. No shade. Right. No shade. <laughs> a little. A little tiny bit of shade. Just a little tiny just bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Hell yeah. Just, 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 just ball <laughs> thing. Just you ball deserve it. it. That's, thank you. Thank you, Tamika. Um. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did sing on the biggest hits, and I'm proud of that. I think that. The downfall of Invoke was a little bit jealousy, a little bit of, um, I was a rebel, you know, I wasn't tolerating yeah. just being told anything or being treated a certain way. And after seven years, eight, actually eight years, if you count the year that it took us to record or seven months, seven months to record the album. Um, so we signed in 89 and that mm. whole thing, the whole uh, recording the album, so we signed, I think we got in the group, the group came together in like November. So mm -hmm. we started recording maybe a month after that. And then our album came out in April of the next year. So what, seven, eight months, seven months later, yeah. it came out. And okay. um, yeah, so I mean, I think that part of the reason that uh, I was kicked out, well, I know that part of the reason I was kicked out is because I was a rebel. I wasn't having them tell me just anything. And the fact that we were making two pennies a record was a travesty. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. No, Ridiculous. Yes, there was enough money to go around. And you take yes. it yes. and made that happen. You don't just act like we're nothing. Oh, we'll, just, we'll take that. Oh, thank you so much. We'll, we'll take that, too. And, right. and, and while they were filling their pockets while we were struggling to make ends meet, I didn't understand that. So, yeah. and then after a while, we started making a little bit of money on the road, but not like the record companies. And then our producers were buying mansions. So I started to see things and I was... Yep, we oh, lost your voice. We lost, we lost your voice. Wait, wait, we lost your voice. We can't yes, hear you. because my best friend... Okay, there we go. Oh. <laughs> she right now. Like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> I'll I'll tell her later. She, called, she called right in the middle of an interview. I'll let her know that later. But yes, yeah, so yeah. we were. Um, I was. I was looking around at the fact that our managers and our not so much our manager. I can't say that because I never really went into his house. He never invited us over. But mm -hmm. our producers, our choreographer, all of these people had mansions, and I was just like, "What the heck is going on?" And again, it's not to say that they didn't deserve it, you guys. Of course they did. Yeah. Denny, Denny should have had his mansion. Um, a choreographer should have had his mansion, Frank Gatson. All these great people that helped us become who we are. But we also deserved our mansions, too, because we helped yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all yeah. worked y'all's Absolutely. Y'all really did. Y'all really, really did. did. 
Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. So I started speaking up and, and because I was doing that, I was um, looked at as a problem. I was the difficult one. I was the, the problem child, as they say, and I was happy to be that because yeah, we need to have the same thing you guys have. We're not telling you guys not to have it yourselves. We're telling you, I right. tell you that we deserve the same. Why not? Right. Vogue is known around the world. If this, if this life on other planets, they know who in Vogue is. In Vogue, no, right? <laughs> yes. on, okay, Tamika. Absolutely. Yeah, so we we deserve that, and I couldn't understand why the other girls were too afraid or just not willing to. In Terry's case, you know, she was dating our producer, so she was getting kickbacks, and oh, um, yeah. but not the way mm -hmm. that you would think. Like she didn't have a mansion like him. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she wasn't living large she like him. She like wasn't, him. you know, maybe she had the money and just didn't buy a mansion. I don't know. But her house, when I saw her house, it was like, okay, this is cute. You know, oh. <laughs> oh. I'm not being funny. Like it was cute. And, and it, I'm, yeah, I am being a little funny. <laughs> yeah, I was about no, to say, come on, Dawn, let's be real. Let's be, let's be real. Dawn, let's you are sharing, sharing your so, truth. So, so, like, this you happened, the this happened to you. Talk to exactly, exactly, you guys. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, but it was still a moderate home compared to Denny. And that was my point. Mm. And <clears throat> if you, want to live like this that's fine it was a it was really a cute house i'm not being funny about that part it yes. was cute but it was not a mansion he had nine yeah. bedrooms or 11 bedrooms and nine bathrooms or seven bathrooms something oh. crazy i remember that and he lived in one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in all the bay area so where is ours that's all i was saying the whole yes. time like why why don't we have this like we're ri we're right. huge stars we should have the same thing absolutely <laughs> But, yeah. but two cents per girl? Two I mean, cents per girl. Yeah. Yeah. Per record, yeah. 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 not girl, per record. Exactly. You know, it's just insane. insane. I can't even imagine. It's an, You know, I, I wonder, it's, it's one thing to be nice. I love the fact that we were not mean girls. We were yes. not catty. We were not messy with each other even. Um, you know, Cindy and Terry had a battle with each other one time, and Terry, Cindy was threatening to kick her ass. I walked in the hotel room, and I was like, what is going on? Like, our manager was standing right there, like, why aren't you stopping this? And Maxine walked in, too. We were like, what the heck is going on? <clears throat> and I had to tell Cindy, like, a few days later, like, you can't bully us like that. You know, that's not cool. Mm. And she right. apologized. Um, but we weren't, we weren't mean girls, just outright. Right. They would... They would treat me like I was the I'm the youngest one in the group, so they would treat me like the younger sister. And if they at first it became Dawn is not doing the right dance steps, Dawn is not doing the right vocals, listen to her note, that sounds terrible. And I was like, wait a minute, are we supposed to be critiquing each other or just me? Mm. You know what I mean? Because Terry, right. you been singing the wrong note to hold on since we started this damn thing. Like she starts no off the acapella part. Seriously, she starts off the uh, acapella part. With, that's her note. Every mm -hmm. time she started to, I always say, why is she? Well, that's the right. <laughs> you know, I was about to say the same exact thing. Exactly. To, but Even I would off, that's the right head. note. When, and I would always give her, yes. her she would always come over to me like, Dawn, what's the note? And I'm like, Terry, yeah. when? But she would always start it when, or if she didn't come to me for the note, she would start it too low, or when, yeah. when, when. Oh, no. She would start it too high or too low, and that messes the rest mm -hmm. of us up. You know, when no. I, hey, yes. I, yeah. We were too high. So yeah. Why are we not critiquing her? That mm. was my thing. You guys are critiquing. So I told Maxine, I left out of the back lounge because that's where we were. <clears throat> we, were, we were coming off the MC Hammer tour, so we would take our, our VHS tape, and we would take the yes. VCR in the back lounge after we changed our clothes, and we would critique the show, but it was really about critiquing me. Oh. And I just got fed up one night, and I said, no, I'm tired of this. So I left out of the lounge, and Maxine came out to go to the restroom, and I stopped her when she was on her way back, and I said, Max, mm -hmm. if this was you that we were talking about, every single time we critiqued the show, and it was always about Maxine and what you do wrong, and why you're over there and not over there, why you did this and that, and why you're no to this, and why you... I said, how would you feel? She said, say no more. She said, come with me. So I got up, uh, I was laying in my bunk and I got up and I um, went with her to the back lounge and she grabbed the remote control from Terry 
Because Terry wouldn't turn it off. She's like, what? And Maxine was like, turn that off, Terry. So she grabbed it from her hand. She turned it off and she said, we treat Dawn differently. And Cindy started mm. saying, no, we're, we're fair to everyone. She said, no, no. Cindy, we treat Dawn differently and you know that. Mm. And Cindy was like, and she told her why. And we critique, we only critique Dawn for the shows. And Cindy was like, yeah, you got a point. Um, and Terry still didn't admit nothing and just let it go. And I left out of the lounge. And after that, it stopped for a while. But then after a certain time, they still did the same damn thing. And when it came to kicking me out of the group, that was later on. Because um, mm -hmm. MC Hammer tour was 91, 92, 91. Yeah, yeah 91. 91. Mm -hmm. uh, or actually 90. It might have been 90. But because we, we did a promo tour to introduce ourselves to the world. So we yeah. toured the States. We only had Hold On as a single, and we toured the States, and then we went abroad, and then when we came back, we heard that MC Hammer won this. So that was 90, 90. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I think we were transitioning into 92, so it was like a few months before 91, I should say, happened. So 91, we toured with MC Hammer, and then we started the, to record the second album, and by, by 92, that album dropped, Funky Divas. Mm. So, but yeah, it stopped for a while, and then by the time they kicked me out, it was the same rhetoric, the same old bullshit, excuse me, mm -hmm. but it was, and yeah. Um, yeah, they were treating me the same way. Like, it was about what Dawn has done wrong, and not Terry, because right. we both did a solo album, so I don't want to jump too far ahead, but right. that's what happened. Right. That's why I left the group. Um, I had a choice. I could have stayed or done it their way. So it was like, stay and do it our way. What is it called? It's called... Um, it was uh, an ultimatum. Not, an ultimatum. Thank you. That's right. That's right. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. They gave you an ultimatum. There was, there was no crazy. compromise. There was no like, let's talk about what the problem is and what's going on or why you guys feel this way towards me. What is it that you guys feel anyway? What have I done? Right. Right. That, that was my so question. Like, exactly. Yeah. Terry's feeling towards you. What was the purpose of exactly. doing this? Treating you this way? Maybe because they knew that Dawn was better. Maybe, Could be. you know, Could be. jealousy. Jealousy. Could be. Because I agree with that. Maybe I agree they knew with that. that people, because back in the day, Dawn, you know, yeah. I know that you probably heard this too, and I was just so young, but I've heard that she was a sex symbol back in the day. Like, you know, like Janet, you know, people, guys, wow. people, people guys yeah, you. people wow. felt to you, you they, know. They didn't, they you know, look you at guys. other girls that way. You had something about you, even yeah. to this day. When we look at your videos with Embo back in the day, like yeah. you had, this, you had this aura about you, and it just, it just stood mm -hmm. out. It was like you was the, you was the star. I see. Yeah. Even, I even, see now, even when you was in the background. I'm so humble, and I appreciate that. I'm not. I'm. I, it's shocking when I hear it because you see yourself different than the world sees you. So I don't. I didn't see it at first. While I was in the group, I definitely didn't see it. But now that I can look at our videos as a fan from that point mm -hmm. of view, looking on on the outside, looking in, as opposed to being in the video, mm -hmm. I see myself now, and I do see mm -hmm. that Aura Lala. I see, I see what um, the world saw. Yes, um, yeah. especially when I see giving him something you could feel. There's a certain. Um, you know, I was just kind of like, you tell me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Swag behind it. Yeah, you know? yeah it had some swag in there that I didn't uh -huh. know that I had. It wasn't on purpose. It wasn't a conscious thing. I'm going to do that right now. Right. Right, right, right. And, right. It, was, and it just came out. And so, and I was still nervous and still shy and still not quite knowing who I was as a woman. Now when yeah. I look at those videos, I'm like, wow. Look yes. at my sex appeal. Look at my Absolutely. thing. I have... They say that in every group, there's a member that has that thing, that je ne sais quoi. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And yeah. I see that I had that, but I wasn't trying to be. There was never, there was never a time when I said, "I'm better than those girls." Yeah. Or, um, you know, uh, I'm all that. I, I still don't feel that way, but I know what I yes. have, and I know my worth. In a humble way, it's like I'm a badass bitch. Yeah, yes. basically, I, you know. Yes. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. A lot of people don't Something understand that. A lot of people make... don't understand, you know, the I, I know my worth. You know, yes. I know where I'm coming from. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. 
you know, right. so it, when you have that self worth and it's already been instilled in you, you know, and you already just let it shine, you let it come naturally and everything. So they critique exactly. it, you know. So and I I know that personally. So, well, you know what too? They tried to make me think that I didn't have my worth. Exactly. They tried to make me think that I yeah. wasn't. Worth. They really did kind of put that feed feed those um messages to me like I'm not. Yes. And it's not to say that they should have exalted me as if I was the only one in the group that can sing or a certain way or that I had, like, we got to make Dawn the solo artist. It wasn't that. I was a team player. But they yeah. me, the way that they treated me, especially in the end, we, we had all agreed that we were tired of making two cents a record. Maxine and I would yeah. always have these powwows, these conversations, and then she would get up and phone with me and talk to Denny. and It would kind of mess up our momentum. It would, it yeah, would plant yeah. seeds in her head about, you know, y'all don't want to do that. You don't want to renegotiate. Well, it's like, first of all, we've sold three to five times platinum on the first album and three, five to seven platinum, uh, eight million, you know, copies on the second album. And mm -hmm. so why, and now we got, you know, um, what's the song with uh, Salt and Pepper, What a Man. And yeah, had, what a man, what a man, what a man. Exactly. And we had um, Runaway Love. Yes, you know that album oh, yes. that we had. We had "Don't Let Go" for the soundtrack. So here we are with all these hits and no money to show for it. Not the way that I thought we should have been living in mansions, just like our producer and just like our choreographer. Mm. So we find Maxine and I finally got Cindy and Terry on the phone. Here we are. We're a group. We're talking for the first time together. We agreed. Cindy said yes. Maxine said yes. Terry said yes. I said yes. So we agreed that we are gonna, we're not gonna go in the studio and do this fourth album until mm -hmm. we renegotiate our contract. Next thing we know, Terry was in the studio and we called her on it. We called her at the studio and we were like, "What are you doing, and why?" Oh well, you know, I don't agree with you guys. And at the time, she was she started dating our producer from day one. And it was really cute. We mm -hmm. thought it was adorable that he was so hot on her. And she was like, well, wow, Danny. But she thought he was cute too. <laughs> and they were dating and it was adorable until it wasn't. And we were like, okay. I started to see that he was treating her a little bit different than us. Not that he gave her the lead of songs that we should have had. He wasn't, he wasn't, um, he wasn't one-sided with her that way. Um, but it was like, mm -hmm. okay. When it we went to his mansion, I was home. like, we, we he has a mansion terry you know that right and he's your mm. man and you're living in a moderate home like where's your mansion why aren't you pushing mm. anything mm. that's going on why isn't this bothering any of you guys um cindy was like so so we agreed that we weren't going in the studio i digress we weren't going in the studio we're not going to record anything else until we renegotiate our contract yeah. we got to the point where we were agreeing. We didn't know what to do. Like, do we go to the the, the rec, uh, record company or do we talk to our producers? Do we talk to our manager? Because our manager was managing our producers as well. Oh. So that was oh. a problem because oh. that was a conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. Bad, yeah. bad deal. Yeah. Okay, so we, um, I guess Terry decided that she didn't like what we were talking about, our idea of what we wanted to do. And I forget what, what our agreement was with each other. We just knew that we weren't going in the studio, but she ended up in the studio. We called her. We were like, why are you there? We agreed on one thing. And here you are in the studio singing. And she was like, well, I don't agree with you guys. And me and Denny have our thing. And you guys just go ahead and make you know decisions without me. You can do that without me. And we were like, we can't do that without you. We signed yeah, as yeah. four people, as four girls. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do that without you like that. That doesn't make any sense. And if we go to the record company, which is what I think we should have done, Cindy, Terry, yeah. Cindy, Maxine, and I should have gone to the record company and said, okay, you have Terry in the studio. We're not just going to sit here while we lose our houses or, or we lose our situation financially. We have no way. We have no means of making a living. Mind yeah. you, I told you we were making two cents a record, so we didn't have right. a lot of money to begin with. So... Um, what can we do? Like, we need help with the situation. And the record company was like, well, we have Terry in the studio, so you guys have to wait, basically. And and Maxine, Cindy, and I couldn't make up our minds. And I was like, okay, you guys. Um, when the record company came to me, so, so, 
So, oh, I'm so, hearing oh, an echo again. I'm sorry. So Terry, no, no, I am. I'm hearing it. Terry went um, on the. Terry went on the. So we supported her first show, which was at the Pantages in Los Angeles. We. Um, I don't hear it anymore. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> um, we supported her show, Maxine and Cindy, and I went to her first show. They gave her a budget for her first video. Then I saw another video of her. So she had what, wherever you are was her first single. They gave her a budget for that video. Then they gave her another budget for her second single, which I think was What Did I Do to You? That's the name of it. And I'm like, okay, you know, she's doing her thing. Um, and I told the group, uh, well, I didn't tell them. Actually, the record company came to me and said, Dawn, now this is seven months after Terry did hers. She was about, she was on the road and I think about to come back off the road. And they said, Dawn, do you want to do a solo album too? And I said, yeah. Because I don't want to lose my house. Yes. So, so uh, what I regret to this day, though, what was my responsibility or my irresponsibility was not telling Cindy and Maxine that I am also doing a solo album. Um, oh. That was, and, and I felt like, well, Terry didn't tell us that she was doing. I was about to say, why do you owe that to? Right. It wasn't yeah. right. just because Terry did it didn't mean you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm sorry, I I'm follow like you. you said that. Yeah. It, it, Two wrongs don't make a right, and I yeah. should have known better. I should have been responsible enough to say, Maxine, Cindy, what do you guys think? You know, this is what I'm going to do before I actually did it. You know, um, that was a responsible thing to do, and I did not do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm angry at myself for that, but that's all I'm angry about. Everything else that I did was a, was supposed to, supposed to do. Um, yes, of course. So Terry, um, when she came back, uh, I told the record company, okay. So yeah, I started the album. I got three songs in and the record company came to me and said, uh, we're going to pull your album and we're pulling Terry off the road. And we want to do an En Vogue album. And I was like, whoa, hold on, put on the brakes. So you guys put out Terry's whole entire album. You put her on the road, you gave her videos, you supported her tour. You did two videos with her, like I said, and and now you're pulling my album three songs in? No, because I knew it was a game. By then I caught on and I was like, oh, so they played me. Got it. So it was divide and conquer. We'll keep doing yeah. busy. We'll Absolutely. Give them a little money I was just fun. about to say that. They keep you exactly. busy, keep you quiet. Exactly. Exactly. Do yeah. you want to know what? No. Yeah. You want to know what? I think huh. that they knew that once you went solo, that your album would have hit and yeah. that in vogue would have probably been over. I think well, no, so. I, I think so. I know. Yeah, so. I you never know. would have been that leading lady to, you know, to, no, to make well, it. Like, this I, is the thing, though. I was still in the group at the time that I did that solo album, just like Terry. Yes. Was. yes. So, so just because it blows up doesn't mean I leave the group. It's like, I don't know who's done that and stayed in a group. Who's been solo and had a big career and stayed in the group? Not a solo. <laughs> Beyonce did it for a minute, and then she then she left. <laughs> so Michael did it for a little while. <laughs> Michael did it. Okay, so he came back. Michael did it for a little while. Towards your album, yes. Yeah, exactly right. Um, yes, yes. Who else? That's it, girl. Let's stop trying to figure. There, there ain't nobody else that done went solo and then come back to a group. Everybody know that. <laughs> but I just, but 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 Dawn, I just think that they thought that you would have that you would have hit, and you know the girls was already I mean, jealous as it is. You know, I, well, I, I think play with think, me then. I think it's just what Dawn expected. They just wanted to keep her quiet. You know, mm -hmm. oh exactly. Lord, Donna started talking. Let's give her something to do to keep her no, quiet. No, no, because no, at that time, Tamika, it was too late for me to talk. I had talked the girls into getting on the phone and doing the conference call. I had talked to them about we're not making any money, you guys, and we're four out, we're three albums in. I mean, all these albums have made a lot of money for a lot of people except us. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones not mm -hmm. making money. Not making money off. So of we it, need right? to do something. And I talked to them, I talked them into that. But then the record company came and got Terry and took her out. So it was like not right. It, yeah, it was it was crazy they that they did no that. Game. And I so I didn't have any after that I didn't have any leverage. So when they came to me for a solo album, my only leverage was to do a solo album. But yes. I think Lala is right in the sense that they thought it was gonna blow up. But my thing was my thing is I'm still in the group. I am they can't I guess it's both started stay, with you. It's hard to yes. stay in a group and be um 
I guess it's hard to be sorry, you guys. It's hard to be in a group and um and be a, a huge solo artist. I mean, Beyonce has come back to Destiny's Child over the years and done a couple little things with them. Michael, like you said, um, is it Des? Rez? I'm sorry. You just everybody muted as you're talking. Exactly. So. Yeah, I guess it would be hard to stay in a group once you have a huge solo career. Well, mm, no, it wasn't Queen because because Freddie Mercury was huge even within the group, though. Mm. You know, but but one couldn't do it without the other. So that's why I wouldn't have left. Right. I, wouldn't have, I don't think I would have left. I mean, it's hard to make decisions with a group situation because one of them will say yes and the other three say no or two will say yes or three say yes. And one of them is like, mm, I'm not sure. Like with Don't Let Go. Terry didn't like Don't Let Go because it wasn't our producers. If it wasn't Denny and Tommy, Denzel Foster, Thomas McGillroy, Terry was not down with the song. And so she she was like hating on Don't Let Go. And we were like, well, we have to force your hand because Don't Let Go is a hit. Period, period, yes. and point to the blank. One of my favorite songs. Yes, we wouldn't have had oh. it though had it not been for Terry. So we kind of had to force her to do the song. Like we called it, like um, you're outnumbered. You're outnumbered. We have to do Don't Let Go because it's a hot song. It's a hit. And um, so we did that. And thank God. But yeah, I think you're right, Lala. I think there was some jealousy there. There was. I think Sylvia Rome was pissed off because I slighted her as well. Mm -hmm. I outsmarted her because I told her, okay, you did Terry's album. You don't want to do mine. That's fine. But I want you to let me go. As a solo artist, I want to be over there. I'll stay yes. in the group. And I'll do exactly what you tell me to do in, in recording that fourth album. But I want to go as far as my solo rights. I want my solo rights. I want revoked. Mm. And I had her sign the paperwork and all this stuff so that I could leave as a solo artist. But I stayed in the group. I recorded that fourth album with them. You can hear my voice all over. They say that they took my vocals off. I'm like, no, you did not. No, you did no, not. No, I was about to say no. I hear you all no. through it. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, to me. Exactly. Because this is the thing. If they would have taken my voice off that album, the record would have sounded different. There's yeah. a piece missing. If Cindy was missing or Maxine was missing, you'd be able to tell. Me, exactly, you'd be able to tell. And so that's why I know they kept they if, if and they're saying they keep saying, well, you didn't record that fourth album. If I didn't record it, then why did you have to take my so-called quote unquote take my vocals off that record if I didn't record it? So there's a lot of lies over the years. There's a lot of buffoonery and stupidity and and having to make me look like the bad girl or the bad guy yes. because they can't actually admit that, that I outsmarted all of them. Really, mm -hmm. when, you, when one monkey leaves the show, it, the whole thing is supposed to go on without him. One yes. monkey don't stop the show and this monkey right. stopped the show. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I was proud because right. they did me wrong. It's like, if you're going to kick yeah. me out, kick Terry out too. Yes. So, um, just like I did. It's no yes. different. Yeah. Fair is fair. But fair Dora, can, I, can, can, I, can I ask you something? In yeah, the please. EV3, in the EV3 album, are you uh -huh. on whatever? That's that's you oh, yes. throughout the whole the, Thank you for answering my yes. question. <laughs> the, um, I was pulling it up like, wait, no, this ain't you. <laughs> I can't I can't sing, but I think you're doing the huh. Yes. Is that you? Lala, is yes that you? Yeah. I, I, I was like, I know that. Yeah, not. it's really low. That's it's a really low it. part. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing yes. it. It's too low for me. I have to be right on the mic. And, but yeah, that's, no, me. that's my part. And then um, Cindy sang my part in the middle. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hearing um, to play your heart again. That's too gone too long. It's a different song. Yes. Um, yes. But she sang it. I did that part too. And then she came in and re sang it. Um, but I'm still in the backgrounds of that song too. So too gone too long. Wherever, uh, what, whatever, whatever you do. Yes. You, yes. You, you can hear me in the background and then the hug. Yes. <laughs> that's that's it. it. That's it. I was that's like, it. no, that's, 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 that's
<laughs> nobody but Dawn. Exactly. And I was like, Thank you. These, I, I was like, this sound like the original in Vogue, but these are three ladies. And I said, there's no way that any of them can cover Dawn's vocals because wow, wow. don't oh let God. go, love, do not sound the same without you. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no,
Uh, <laughs> Hunt. Uh, it's been 30 years. No. 30 freaking years. Uh, Are you serious right now? Yeah. Everybody knows that when you do a benefit, a charity, everybody that works on the charity gets paid. And you couldn't pay us after all these years of not paying us. You couldn't pay us union scale at least 350 bucks or 600 bucks a piece. Like, really, Sylvia? And so yes. I said, no. I said, no, I don't want to do it. Maxine, don't ask me again. She's like, Dawn, please, 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 Dawn. You got to do it. You no. got to do it. I was like, Maxine. So by the time I said yes, which was about a few days later, uh, they already had Rona in there. So we had to do it with Rona. And I was like, okay. <laughs> don't step on my feet, girl. That's all I got to say. <laughs> don't step on my feet, girl. I'll be right here. You go over there. I'm being I so silly. You do your part all the way over there. <laughs> on the opposite side of me. Don't come over here. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're her off self. I don't want to talk about people, but she could have had a seat so that y'all could have did that tour. I am so over it. I, exactly. Girl, sit back and when it's your turn to speak this. the thing, then you can down. come on up here. Exactly. But let these fans get what they're asking for. We could have made so much money behind this tour. Exactly. Yes. And not only that, it's not just the money, but it's also for the fans. This is my thing. In, yeah. 2000, in 2020, in 2010, that was our 20th year anniversary, and they told Rona that she was not a part of it. When, um, well, what's her name? Um, Alicia Keys asked us to do the um, that show with her, the BT Awards that we were talking about earlier. Yes. She said she required, requested the four originals. She did not want to Amen. members, and she made it very, very clear, and the girls were like, well, you know what? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you know what, Rona? You got to sit this one out. Rona was like, okay. And she didn't like you it, get back she sat time. it out. She sat it out. So my thing was, it wasn't just for the money. It was for the fans. Yeah. It was us yeah. giving back to our fans. Now, last year was also the 30th year anniversary for Rona and, and her uh, Mickey Mouse Club. Oh. Did she ask? No. Well, of course not. 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 Right. Dawn said, no. Oh, I'm no. Right. Oh, I'm no. Right. Oh, I'm no. Right. Of course not. She didn't ask us to be a part of that, and we wouldn't have stepped in and said yes anyway, unless it was a big benefit for Disneyland, over, you know, uh, Walt Disney okay. overall. But for right. her particular thing, let her shine. Let her have that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was on the uh, Jamie Foxx show years ago, too. And if Jamie Foxx was to have, I think they had an anniversary as well. But if they were to have an anniversary, would we be a part of that? No, we would not. So no, why should yeah. we have her a part of what we started? When we started out, Rona wasn't a part of that. Yeah. Right. We That's the part that I'm. That, that she now stands on that foundation that we right. built. So exactly. why, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sorry. We built the foundation. She stands on that she foundation. Sits on so it, right. Just Paula, even if she gave us six months, just six months with our fans. Yeah. Our original yeah. fans, the original girls, let them celebrate us. Cindy, Maxine, Terry, and Dawn, let them celebrate us and, and step back. Just be humble about it and do that. I don't understand why. The, and, and this is my thing to you guys. Cindy and I, before that charity happened, about four or five months before that, we sat down as a group and had a meeting. Now, Rona wasn't there for that. So why can't she not be there for the rest of it? I don't understand. Absolutely. Exactly. We had a meeting. And my managers were there. Maxine came by herself. Cindy and Terry had a man manager as well, Dalube. Dalube. <clears throat> He's from South Africa. And he, South was there, Africa. he was there. And my managers and were I there. And Rona was not there. So if she can't be there for that meeting... Exactly. I don't understand why you guys don't get it. Like I don't. And me and Cindy were going at it a little bit. We weren't arguing in a bad way, but she was saying, "Well, Rona's been with us for thirteen years. Thirteen years, because she talks in her nasal. That's how Cindy talks like this." Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I have her down. So I love it. it. I love it. it. That is Cindy. Really she's talk. always oh, on the show. I love it. <laughs> She's always the oh I have her down. I have Cindy down. And um, she was like, so. Yeah, she is very easily. Rona's been with us for 13 years. And I was like, well, 
okay, I understand that she's been with you guys longer because Maxine and I were only with you for eight years. I get it. Yes. But, yes. and she said, and Rona, you know, we have hits with her. And um, she said, we went to number 11 on the charts on our album. I said, okay, Cindy, that's nice. That is really great. It really is. It really well, is. When Maxine and I are with you, we go number one. Oh, Yes. We don't do number 11. Yes. Okay, yes. so. Yes. That's me. Yes. That's what that is. Number point blank straight to the top. Yes. Thank you. Number one, number one, number one across the board. That's what we bring. Okay. Yeah. So it's nice that you have Rona and it's really cute. That's great. But I'm just saying, like, why can't we, why can't we just do some tour dates, you know, that whole year, that whole 2009 to 2010, leading up to our 10th, uh, 20 year anniversary at that time. Rona wasn't a part of that. She wasn't on the road with us. She was not there for Alicia Keys. So why can't we do the same thing? I don't, again, it's like coulda, woulda, shoulda. And you can't, you don't know the minds of people. This is my thing. Yeah. I think that with Rona there, like Maxine said, when, when, when this 30 year anniversary is over, they're going to kick you and I to the curb again and go on with Rona because they get paid more when you are not, and I are not there. Yeah. So if Maxine and I are not there, they can pay Rona whatever Rona would get as a new artist. <clears throat> with oh, me and Maxine, wow. they pay us, yeah, they got to pay us top dollar. So maybe that's why I have no idea why they didn't just allow the fans to enjoy us for the way they did when we first came out. I thought I thought that was very selfish on Cindy and Terry's part. That's true. Well, before we move to Lucy Pearl, I do want to I do want to speak on the whole. Um, rehearsal thing, how they didn't let you and Maxine, you know, film that for y'all selves ah. for, you know, for like, for like memory, you know, cause yes. it, 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 it's, it's been 10 years since y'all had seen each other, exactly. you know? Yeah. Well, we were and doing, I told their manager, I called him, um, the day that he, I told him that I was going to do, uh, the, the show with them. Cause at first I told him no, and then I had to call him back and say, okay, I changed my mind, Maxine. Um, kind of talked me into it. So I told him at that time, I said, Delube, would you mind if Maxine and I have somebody else, that, I have a guy that wants to come in and film this for us and kind of document the whole thing, you know, and get everything documented. And um, we're going to do what I call a diva mentory. And I coined the phrase diva mentory. So he said, oh, wow, that's a great idea. Um, sure. I don't see why there's no. So he said, yes. The next day he called me and he said, um, well, Cindy and Terry mm. feel like um, you guys haven't been seen in a while. You haven't seen each other in 10 years. And it's, ah. And I was like, you know what? You got a point. I understand that. I get it. Um, I said, well, what if he... So I said, okay, that day. And then I think the next day before I got on a plane. No, I drove down. I drove down. So before I got the car and got on the road, I think I called him and I said, what if what if we have him just film the day that we do the show? And he said, I'll get back to you. And I am still waiting. To this day, he has not told me yes or no. Get out. Yeah. And the day so of the show, mean? Maxine asked him again. Like, we have somebody. He's here in Anaheim. He lives 45 minutes away from where we're at right now. But he has to know, because this is a Friday or Saturday. <clears throat> and there's going to be a lot of traffic. So we got to let him know if he's going to get here and set up his cameras for us. We need to know that. She's right. still waiting. He never gave her an answer. Never oh, told no. her yes or no. Exactly. Meantime, during our rehearsals, during uh, sitting backstage, you know, uh, in the in the trailer, we're all talking and laughing, having a good time. Terry is silly as she want to be. Still funny as heck. Aww. We're cracking up. <laughs> I over laugh, so I always have to stop myself because I will be hoarse. By the time we get to showtime, I'll be like, <laughs> so I'm like, Terry, oh my God, she's so funny. So we were in the trailer and we're waiting and uh, Rona's taking pictures the whole time. She's filming, right. snap, 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 yep. She told us, you guys, let's do a boomerang. Cindy and Maxi Cindy and Terry jumped in first. But they were the main ones saying that I couldn't have anybody come film me and Maxine. Are you kidding? It's not that right. kind of stuff is the reason that I won't go back to do in Vogue because Cindy and Terry act like they are the bosses, the overseers, the, the holders of the key to the city within Vogue. And I'm like, you guys were there because you had the right to be there, but you kicked me out. So I had no right. I would have stayed in the group and been the same thing if I was given the right to, but you guys kicked me out. So 
And don't treat me like I'm a newbie. Right. Because I'm one of the founding right. members of this group. Don't treat Maxine exactly. like she's a newbie either. Because we're founding members here. You let Rona do whatever the hell she wants. You let her film everything, but you won't let me and Maxine do anything. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to be treated like the stepchild. No. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. not. I don't no. blame you. I love that you stand your ground. Thank you so much. I ask a question yeah. you going back to In Vogue. Um, Would you say Devontae? I said I was. I said I'm glad you cleared that up because I was just about to ask you a question about you going back to In Vogue. Like, uh, if Ron was to step aside and y'all could clear, you know, the air, work everything out, would you ever consider going back to In Vogue? Well, this is what's hard, Devontae. This is what's hard. It's I. I can understand because I'm a fan of music as well. So standing on the outside looking in, it looks like, oh my God, if you guys could just work it out. If you could mm -hmm. just apologize to Dawn even, or just have the love that you supposedly as sisters uh, have, because when we're in public, it's like, oh, we're sisters, we love each other. We love Dawn. Mm. But you guys don't love me so much that you kicked me out of the group, that you didn't hear my truth at all. And that, mm. and that the things that you kicked me out for were things that you guys should have been upset about as well. Were you guys yes. okay with two pennies of record? No. Were you guys okay with the, the fact that all the people around us were buying mansions and Sylvia Rome was living high, higher on the horse? Cause she already had it before us, but because of us, she got even more as a label head, as a head of Atlantic records. So were you guys okay with that? Like nobody sees, I, I just don't understand. I call it, there's a song that I started doing with actually with Devante uh, from, um, from, uh, oh my God. Come on, uh, Devante. Not, um, not, um, oh, not, 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 not Silk. Um, no. um, oh, gosh. Jodeci. Oh. Jodeci. What are you talking about? Jodeci. Um, uh, Jodeci. 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 Yeah, from Jodeci. Devante. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We started doing the song. Um, and I called, he said, what do you want to talk about? So the biggest subject, of course, at that time was me being kicked out of the group. So I called the prostitutes of the industry. Sign on the dotted line, give your money to me. Because that we were mm. prostitutes to our record label, to our producers. All of our money was going to everyone else. And I was like, you guys, so when you're kicking me out of the group right now, you guys are okay with this behavior? Because at the time, the record company was like, well, Dawn, you can't have any hidden agendas. You know, um, we can't have anybody uh, with side deals and all this stuff. I was like, okay, you know. Um, I have a side deal, but I'm not doing that side deal. That side deal has nothing to do with En Vogue right now. Yeah, I'm not in the studio recording with the side deal. I'm in the studio recording with En Vogue. Yes, yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, that fourth out al that fourth album um, became EV3. So I was recording what be what was going to be EV4 or whatever the name. We didn't have a title yet, but you know, I recorded this whole album with you guys. So what are you saying that there's a hidden agenda? I don't understand that. Right. You're kicking me out for doing a solo album when Terry did a solo album too. Why aren't you guys kicking her out? Right. I don't get exactly. that whole thing. Again, it was, it was standards. double fucking standard. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was exactly that. There's no other way to put it. There's no other way for me to yeah. do it except that. So I don't know. I, I just, um, going back to a group that did that to me, it's like, if you guys were willing to, and it's not just that one time though, you guys. I yes. came back to the group, like I said, in 2010. They did it again. There were <clears throat> three deals on the table. It was, it was, uh, RC, I'm sorry, RCA Dawn, really? Sony, um, uh, Rough Town Records, which was a small little nobody label. <clears throat> and so Sony, Rough Town Records, and Warner Brothers. And I was thinking, oh my God, we got this Warner Brothers deal. Sounds great. Sony mm -hmm. sounded good too, but they wanted us to redo all of the songs from the biggest girl groups of the 60s. So Supremes, Martha and the Vandellas, you know, it, Dancing in the wow. Streets, uh, Stop in the Name of Love, um, you know, all the big girl groups at the time. Oh my goodness. And yes. they wanted us to redo all those songs. And I thought, okay, that's great. But <clears throat> the only people that get paid from those songs, because there's no oh, writing the credit. They, right. The yeah, people we that get writers did it. And yeah. the only people that are going to get writer, writer's credits are the people that wrote those songs. So Smokey yeah. Robinson is getting ready to get paid big time Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. So 
I wasn't down with that deal, but they took the rough town deal. And I was like, you guys, I was begging and pleading up until the point that they actually signed. And I was like, you guys, we are so much bigger. Right now we have the four of us together. Rough town, Cindy kept saying, rough town is giving us 50,000 a piece. I'm like, have you guys read the contract? Mm. Rough town is a small label. You guys, they cannot they do don't that. They don't have that type of money. 50, exactly, exactly. That is so real. They can't give us that kind of money. That's two hundred thousand dollars, fifty grand a piece. Four girls, right. a lot of the money. Four girls. I said, but read the contract in the first page. On the first page, second paragraph, it says, "We get ten thousand upon signing, forty thousand if, if, if the album goes a certain amount, like platinum, double platinum." Yes. If. Yes. Yeah. That's like true. no. Uh, no, that's not that's not what it is. No, they're gonna give us fifty and they signed it anyway. So I was <sighs> like, I had no choice but to leave the group at this point. Cause you guys are in a deal that I can't be a part of. I can't be a part of, right? I can't yeah. be in that contract. You guys already signed. I'm out of the group. So again, yeah. and, and on the phone before they signed, we were on the phone for the last time before they signed, and, and we were on the phone for two hours, you guys. I was in the car and I'm sitting in the in front of my bank and I'm looking because I'm like, they're gonna close. So I kept looking and looking and they were like, well, Maxine was like, well, Dawn's not going to sign. So our manager was on the phone and she said, Dawn's not going to sign the deal. It's obvious. So Joe Mobile Hill was our manager. She was like, Joe, <clears throat> can we, so since Dawn is not going to sign the deal, can we take her? Um, she's got very New York, very New Jersey. Yeah, can we take Dawn's, um, well, she talks on the end of her breath all the time. So can, oh, we, take okay. Dawn's, um, can we take Dawn's? Forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars to split it three ways. I was like, "Wow, wow, this is straight like that." Fucking wow, exactly. Wow. And he said, right then, he didn't say, "Well, let me talk to them and find out." He said, "Yes." What? I said, I said Joe. I said, "Wow." I said, "Joe, you can't say yes unless you've already spoken with them." Spoken so obviously, you. Right. you had this plan. I already, already spoken to them. You already had this conversation. He already spoke to them no. that in case Dawn says no, can we do this? That's what it was. So when they signed, a month later, 30 days to the day, Maxine said, Dawn, I'm sending this email because we I you were absolutely right. We this this rough town deal is crap. I'm gonna put it in my book because I'm gonna screenshot that page, that uh my email. This rough town deal is crap and we probably have to sue Renee to get out of it. And I was like, wow, Maxine, I am popping my collar because I told you, <laughs> I told Cindy and I told Maxine, you guys, we can, we are so much better than rough town. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Sometimes, again, that prostitute mentality, you got a mm -hmm. woman. And I say that because prostitutes are on their knees all day. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. on their backs all day. All day. And uh -huh. what do they do when they get home? They give their money to who? Their pimp? Their pimp. There you go. Was he with you when you did this work? They, and not he? at all. No. So that's <sighs> what I mean about that. It's like the record yeah. company, yeah, they get their piece, but you guys are giving all your money. Now you're giving all your money to Rough Town. Crazy. That's just crazy. That is yeah, it was crazy. crazy. I didn't understand. Again, some people, what I've resolved in my life and over these years is that some people... <clears throat> not everybody is a warrior. Not everybody is willing to stand up and stand out and say, you know what? Enough. I'm not going to deal with that anymore. You have to pay me more. I want higher wages or I want better mm -hmm. health care or I want, you know. Of course. Yeah, we're not willing to stand up because it's scary to not do that. It's scary to do that. I'm sorry. Right. It's easier right. to just sit back and just, well, the record company is this big, huge company. It's a corporation and I'm just little old me. I can't, uh uh. We are the ones with the power. We are in. They vote. need we're you. Go exactly. Yes. If we don't go if in the studio and sing another thing, they have no album. They have no. Mm -hmm. They need that revenue, that money. Yeah. Yeah. That Invoke brings. If we're not bringing that to them, they don't have an album from us. They can't make that money. Yeah. And the girls wouldn't hear me. They just. They just didn't see the 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 truth of who the. Yeah. The power. You got to know your own mm -hmm. worth. Your own worth. Wow. Yeah, well, I know that we're on happening. a schedule. I know that we're on a schedule here. So can we jump into Lucy Pearl? Yes, we can. 
Yeah. We can. Okay. Awesome. That's so, my favorite subject. I love Lucy Pearl, you guys. Yes. Such a fan of my own group. I know it's crazy, but <laughs> oh, that's that's I, love your baby. I love Invoke. I love Invoke. I love Invoke. It's your baby. Lala. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is because Invoke was put together by our producers. Lucy Pearl was put together by Raphael. That was his idea. Mm. And then we all made the music and the sound and the look of Lucy Pearl was our own. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a little bit yeah. different than in Vogue. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you something, Dawn, before you get into Please. it? Yes. How yes. did the name Lucy Pearl come about? How did y'all create that name? Oh, my gosh. So Lucy Pearl came about because... Raphael kept saying, well, what are we going to call it? <laughs> we were going to call ourselves. We were at the studio. We were recording, and we were coming up with names, just random stuff. Like, he kept saying, three times dope, or uh, uh, what was it? Um, soul times three. And I was like, uh, you know, <laughs> soul this and soul that and soul this, okay? <laughs> um, and he was like, uh, he came back one day, and he just said, because I said, why don't we do this, you guys? Instead of just trying to come up with a name, because nothing sounded right. <clears throat> let's just randomly, I don't care what we're doing. If we're in, if I'm in the studio singing or Raphael's playing bass, we'll just say a name. Mm -hmm. Just say something. Write some things down and just say it. And he said, Lucy, out of nowhere. And we were like, I said, Raphael, this sounds like an old country singer, old country <laughs> female singer. That sounds like some old granny. No, Lucy. Uh uh. And he was like, a few days later, I think he said Lucy Pearl. And we were like, you know what? Lucy Pearl. <laughs> Lucy Pearl. Lucy still sounds like a female artist, female country singer, but it's got a ring to it. So, and so what I did was I wrote it down in a list of other artist names. And I would always put the rock groups. So, like Led Zeppelin, Lucy Pearl, Stained. Um, uh, what's the other uh, Maroon Five? Lucy Pearl, mm -hmm. like yes, that. Yes, yes. And I was like, okay, I love it. it. It just started sticking. We are Lucy Pearl. Lucy Pearl. We just say it out loud. And it stuck. <laughs> it was just random. Like we come back from eating lunch, and somebody would just yell it out, Lucy Pearl. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like, okay, okay, okay. It works, it works, it works, it works. So yeah. yeah, that's how we came up with that name. That was Raphael's idea, though. The whole thing. Really? Yeah, the whole group doing it, all that. So he found out that I was solo and he called my manager and she said no. She told uh, me yeah. no before I even got a chance to know that the opportunity was there. She told oh, me, no, me ma'am. <laughs> yeah, well, she felt like, you know, I'm right now I'm, I got some deals on the table for Dawn, which she did. Mm -hmm. She had uh, Virgin Records was on the table and RCA. Mm -hmm. And RCA, uh, Bob Jamison flew me out to New York. Um, I have an echo again, you guys. Thank you. We got it. We got it. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, they flew me out to New York, and I really like that deal better than the Virgin Records deal. And um, yeah, so I like that deal better. And when Raphael hit me up, I was like, wow, my manager told me that she talked to you and blah, blah. And you didn't mean to tell me that she told you now. He said, well, yeah, it's just me, you, and Ali from Tribe Called Quest. And you got the Tonys and Trump on Quest and Vogue coming together. And it was like, oh, my God. I just thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. Wow. We didn't have a name yet. Uh, in the very beginning, we didn't have a name. So that, that that's how we came up with the name. And then I was wow. like, the more we recorded, Tamika, it was like, it just was brilliant from the very day one. First song. First song, yeah. Yeah. I was excuse excuse the phone. I was working with some producers, um, and they were Raphael loved their sound. I was working mm. with them before I got to Lucy Pearl, and he loved their sound. He was like, "Bring them in, like let them work with us." And I was like, "Cool." Mm. They were like, "Yes!" Oh my god, <laughs> a big project like this, yeah. So they were part of our deal, and I gotta say, they were the reason that the Lucy Pearl project was so great. Um, wow. Yeah, because they. They were Bobby and Glenn were their names. Bobby was Mexican. Uh, Glenn is white. <clears throat> and they call themselves, their production name is uh, Jake and the Fat Man. And oh, and the Fat Man. Yeah, there was a TV show back in the 70s that came on Jake and the Fat Man, or 80s, uh, that came on. So they named themselves after that show. 
because Jake was the skinny and fat man was he called himself Jake. I don't know. It was weird how they kind of told it. But um, and they were the ones who really put that Lucy Pro album together. Bobby, the Mexican one, is the is the DJ. So he would scratch and do all the stuff that you hear scratching on them. Oh on the my album. That's Bobby. And he brought in these samples and these break beats. And Raphael was like, damn, you guys are wow. Yeah. Um, and Raphael would play like 12 bass lines over a break beat, and we're like, oh my god. So the next day we would come to the studio, and that would be the start of Can't Stand Your Mother or Dance Tonight or Oh my gosh. Yes, uh La 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 or Every Day or Can't Stand Your Yeah. Uh Don't Mess with My Man. They, these guys were so uh, magical and so dope. I was like, you guys are the reason that Lucy Pearl is so good. I got to give them credit for that because Raphael was dope as hell, but he wasn't, he was not the producer to make the sound of Lucy Pearl the way it was. It was Bobby and Glenn, Jake and the Fat Man. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And you and, you and Raphael, y'all go way back, right? We do. As we were 16. As kids, yes. Yes, exactly. As kids. So, so I know that. You know, I, I know reuniting with your brother almost, you know, or a exactly. cousin or a family well, member. And the, exactly, Lala. That's exactly why I didn't do my diligence with this particular contract like I did with Invoke. Mm. I gotta say, um, it was my fault for, I blame myself. See, there's parts of things that I have to take responsibility for. And that is one of them. Mm. I did not, um, what they call redline the contract. I didn't underline stuff. I didn't ask the questions that I needed because I thought Raphael had my back. Right. He's not going to dog me. He's not going to step on me. He's Raphael. I love him. He loves me. That's how I, that's you trust how I looked him. at it. Exactly. You trust, trust him. Yep. Yep. And I should not have done so. Wow. And it wasn't that he was trying from the beginning to dog me out or to give me less than, but it's that contract was really, really, really bad. Um, and it just wasn't in favor of an artist at all. I don't know what he was thinking, but it was not that great. It was not a great, it was not a great, um, great contract. So I could have asked for more, I could have done more things to protect myself in the long run, you know? Wow. Yeah, so he, he didn't have my back and I know he regrets it to this day because Lucy Pearl, to me, I love In Vogue. Don't get me wrong. Of course. Oh, but that Lucy Pearl album was so dynamite and so great. I just hear it and I think, oh my God. We that was amazing. Huh? That was amazing. That was amazing. Really wow. yes. Every song is dance tonight. When she, yeah. she to this day, she exactly. gets down, okay? Oh <laughs> that's, my like, God. that's like, like I remember yeah. where I was when I first heard it on the radio. Are you cup in your hand, you know. The <laughs> very first, the very when he I want to dance tonight. Yes. I was like, okay. okay. Yes. Let's dance, exactly. Let's dance, Raphael. Exactly. Yes. Uh, that's, how, that's how it makes you feel. It, it feels yeah. good. Yeah. 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 You know, the, yeah. the parts in between, it was just so, so dope. And then, um, sure hope that you're not Yeah. Who says token? Who says fucking Raphael? Raphael, 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 wrote, Raphael wrote my parts, Lala. You know what? Well, I would have been like Raphael. Really? Excuse uh, me, sir. Tuckin is not a word. Yes. Tuckin. Tuckin. You know. The educator in me was like, "Excuse me, Tuckin." Where is that in Webster? I don't. It isn't. It isn't. That's a new word. Raphael made that up. He's so creative. Um, and I just thought, you're crazy. I can't say this. And he was like, you got to say it. Like, no, say it. And I was like, so I'm in the studio and I did it. Sure, hope that you're not took it. Oh, my yes. God. It sounds good. You made took it, it sound good. so good. Exactly. That was my feel. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, grammarly, grammar wise, because I'm really big on grammar, um, especially with emails, because you can tell who can write and who can't. So mm -hmm. when he did that, I was like, Raphael, that is so ass backwards. I love it. Let me sing it. So he's like, yeah, in there. <laughs> but I can't do this. I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So that whole project, though, was so light. There was so much love. Aww. And creativity was everywhere. And it was just beautiful. I bet. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm coming in. 
Got a call coming in. It's okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry. So sorry, Devante. You're so, good. You're good. When um, we had a girl named Monet, she helped us write too. Monet is getting ready to work with. So I digress. She helped me write uh, my parts on I Can't Stand Your Mother. So we were battling with Raphael for how much his mother meant to me that I couldn't stand yes. her. Aww. And he was battling Aww. for how much my mother meant to him and he couldn't stand her. It was like that like the whole time, going back and forth. And Monet was a big part of the writing skills on that album. She's dope as hell. So just last, what it's been three weeks now, Raphael's cousin, Elijah, played on. So, OK, Elijah was in the group. Tony, Tony, Tony at first. It was okay. supposed to be, it was supposed to be um, Raphael, Tim, Dwayne, which is the three that we always see, but it was also supposed to be Elijah, uh, Jubal, I think it was, Carl. So it was six guys all together. Raphael and Ali, I'm sorry, Raphael and, um, and Dwayne and Tim allowed the record company to kick those other three guys out. But at first, Tony, Tony, Tony started out as three, as six guys, not three. What? So, yeah, and Raphael mm -hmm. and, and uh, Elijah is Raphael Elijah. and Dwayne's cousin, and he was in the group. Mm. They kicked him out. So, um, uh, Elijah was on the road with Lucy Pearl. He said, uh, you know, I want to work. So he came on the road with us anyway. And Elijah and I had it out with each other a couple of times because I don't know what his ego was doing, but we had it out. So recently he reached out. I reached out to him because I saw him on. I thought he was on my timeline. He says he wasn't, but OK. <clears throat> and I requested his friendship and he was like, man, you have no idea. Can we please talk? So I, this is three weeks ago. So we got on the phone and he's like, Dawn, I first of all, I have to apologize to you for my ego back then. Um, I was a motherfucker. I was not nice to you. I was mean. And uh, you were coming in and you were taking over. And I was I was like, I'm not trying to take over anything. I'm here for Lucy Pro because it's a great project. Yes. But I'm a girl. And anytime there's a girl, a female involved, everybody's you got to give some space. She's going to get the, mm -hmm. the attention. You know, you can't be jealous of me. Um, right. So he said, I want to work with you on some stuff. He said, I want to do some shit too with Raphael. And I was like, oh, so you too, huh? Um, uh. And so we just talked. He said, we can do some virtual shows. So now we're working on virtual shows. Okay. So we're getting ready to work. Yeah, as a band, we're going to work together. And he's got That's Jubal. He has Carl and all the guys that got kicked out of Raphael's situation and, and Dwayne out of the Tonys. They're all yes. wanting to work with me right now. And I love it because. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Exactly. More than just being creative, it's also because it's vindication for me <clears throat> that now I'm not the only one talking about what happened to Lucy Pearl. Mm -hmm. You got kicked out of En Vogue and then Lucy Pearl fell apart too. And, and so Dawn, it looked like it was always my fault. That's what everybody so, thought. That's what yeah. everybody thought. Yeah. The four and of us so were the same way. Like, we your have truth. to get to the bottom of that. Yeah. Yes. And I'm so, so glad that you're sharing your truth to let people know that it wasn't you, you know, exactly. it was not you. I, did, I didn't have the power of the press back then because I needed a, I needed to pay for a promoter. I mean, a publicist and I didn't have it. So mm. the girls were out there giving their piece. And I was also told, yeah. you know, by my people, just wait your turn. You're going to be able to talk about all of this. You're going to, when your album comes out and I'm like, but what if my, you know, and it never came out. So I never got to say what happened until now. Yeah. So you're absolutely God. right. And now though, having Elijah and Jubal and um, the whole band and Monet, Monet wrote on the, the, the um, Lucy Pearl album. She didn't get paid either. Oh, she, wow. She wrote with me. Yeah, I can't send your mother, la, la, la. She wrote her, the girl parts we wrote together. She didn't get paid either. Hollywood, yeah. uh, you know, they can't handle us. I wrote by myself, but and the and you uh, without you Raphael wrote by himself so she helped in a big way with that album and she didn't get paid either so now she's wow. on the road with us and we're all going to do these interviews together awesome <clears throat> um, yeah to talk about the truth because this business is treacherous unfortunately it is the music i know music comes first but it is it should be business music business yes. music mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. The things that happen to artists should not happen. And I feel for 
the older artists who are not able, young enough to go out and tour or nobody's requesting them because I know they didn't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You you only see this though with the with the black artists. You don't see it with the white artists like Garth Brooks or Dixie Chicks, you know, or um, the Go Go's, you know, Go Go's. Like, yeah. You don't see that with them. You don't hear about them not making money. They have other issues, but it's not money. Um, yeah. So I really I'm grateful again that all of this has happened. I'm sorry. You probably had more questions about Lucy Pearl. Yes. Do y'all have any questions you want to ask? I don't want to just take over the interview here. <laughs> well, uh, to your um, statement about, you know, the white groups and the black groups, you know, yes. and the difference with the money, but, you know, different issues. You mm -hmm. think it's really a lot of money that is? Is it, is, it, is it because sometimes black people get their stuff together? Or is it because, <laughs> I mean, why do you think it is? That's, that's no, why. because a tribe called Quest, like when I got in the group with Lucy Pearl situation, um, I asked Ali what happened with his group, and he was like, "Me, Tip, and Fife were just like, we can't go any further. We've done everything that we want to at this point, and we we amicably broke up." You know, you see the roots; they work together. I mean, it's yeah. not to say that the Dixie Chicks don't not get along. It's not to say that they don't take care of their money. It's that they they have people around them to help them resolve their issues. Um, yeah. You can afford. You can't afford to get a, a personal accountant when you're only making two pennies a record. How is that? Mm. In our case, we didn't have enough money to keep the right people. And with our situation, our manager was managing us and our producers. So there was a conflict of interest there that we yeah. couldn't get past. And there's no way that, I couldn't even go to my manager and say, so Denny and Tommy are doing this, should we do that? Because he couldn't talk about Denny and Tommy because he represented them too. Wow. So our That's situation just, was a little crazy. bit different. Yeah. That's just yeah, crazy. How did you find out? We didn't have anybody to have our backs. I'm sorry, Devontae, mm -hmm. go ahead. Right. Uh, how did you find out that I was only making two pennies on the dollar, you know, because when we were on the road with MC Hammer, our very first tour, mm -hmm. um, Cindy had a conversation with him and told him we were only making two. And he was like, what? Huh? Come, come again? Two what? 2,000 pennies? No, not two pennies. 2,000, right? Is that what you said? Two 2,000 pennies a record? And she said, no, we're only making two pennies a record. So when we got out the tour, um, he allowed us to go to his attorney and ask questions. And he said, make sure you bring your um, your contract so you can ask these questions and find out why the hell you guys are not making more money than that. And we did, and we went to him, and we sat there all day long and asked questions, and he was like, you guys got a dinosaur deal. Wow. You have a dinosaur deal. These deals aren't even written today. They're not even, it's, yeah, they're obsolete. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, it's crazy. So, that's why you're getting two pennies a record. It's a dinosaur deal. This was back in the 50s, 40s. These are the kind of deals you would get, but not today. It's crazy. So what, really pissed, what really pissed Dez off, and Dez, you can tell Miss Robinson about what pissed you off in Lucy Pearl, because <laughs> what 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 was it? Go ahead, Dez. What really, what really upset me was... Like, like, like you said in the interview with us earlier. Yeah. The your best friend did some shisty underlying stuff. Now he my did, question my is, why didn't you just beat the living holy out of him? Because <laughs> I, 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 I get that we're friends. Yes, but I know. That ain't what you said. You said why but... you ain't burn his house down. That's what you what? said. Yes, yes. That's what you why said. You burn house down That's and what you said. Said. Doing, you burn the house he wanted you to burn the house down. Doing, he wanted you to pull a left eye. Okay, yeah. exactly. Oh my God, Des, you're not the first person to say that. You are not. You are but because I did lose my house, I did. You're absolutely right. Um, we were going on the road, and I kept. Asking Raphael, he said to me when I first signed to him, if you sign with me and do this whole project with me, uh, I don't have a lot of money to give you up front, but whatever you need, I can find it. I can get it for you. And I'm like, you know what? I think this is going to be dope as hell. So yes, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I turned down RCA. I called Bob Jameson at RCA in New York and I said, uh, well, 
Raphael has this idea, this group, this Lucy Pearl meets, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Tribe Called Quest meets and Vogue meets Tony, Tony, Tony. I think it's great. He said, no. I said, well, I have to decline your offer. Because I wow. think Lucy Pearl, I, well, I didn't have a name yet. We didn't have a name yet. But I said, I think this group is going to be bigger than En Vogue. I mm -hmm. really do. And he said, well, I wish you the best. And I said, thank you. And I, so I turned down RCA for Raphael. And that's what I told wow. him when he came to my room in Amsterdam. He was like, he was like, Don, I'm so sorry. I'm so upset. And I, you know, I know. I was like, Raphael, I lost my fucking house because of you. Mm. There's no other way that I can put it. It wasn't because of me. It was because of you. You said you mm. have my back when I need you. And I needed you. And you didn't have my back. The album was supposed to come out uh in june here we are in november and the album is still not out when we went overseas oh and I, like i said i was packing my house up when we were we were in paris at a hotel called the cost hotel c-o-s-t-e beautiful hotel it was like a nightclub mm -hmm. in the lobby it was so loud they had a dj when you walk in it was like the w you felt like you were at a club wow. like, oh, no, it was like that it was so great and we were standing at the front desk the day after we got there, because the record company had sent us our um, layout of our rec of our uh, album cover, of our album cover. Yes. And so we were looking at it and trying to piece it together because you had to put two, because put two, they made it big so we could see it, how big it was going to be on an album. So we had to kind of piece it together and tape it together and look at it. And I was still like crying in my head, like, I lost my house. Like before I came to oh, Paris, I had to pack my house up to move out. Yeah. That's so, crazy. That's it sad. was insane. It was insane. So so, but this is the thing about life. You can always buy another house. I know my yes. credit is messed up, so it's a little bit difficult, but I'm, I'm still messed up with what happened. The house, you know, yes. you lose a house, it kind of affects your credit for a long time, longer than anything else. But I will never trust again in that way. And now I'm mm. extra over or overly protective with my life i don't yes. just get in and sing for people well i've done that even i've done that i'm sorry i i have i really have i did uh i went back to talk to Raphael with my ex-husband and we went to Raphael's studio and i was like walking around like wow we bought you this studio okay Raphael. Like, wow. <laughs> oh wow like, oh, okay oh. and mm -hmm. yeah because he bought a studio after lucy pearl so um he's like don i got this song that i'm working on really and i heard it and i was like oh my god so okay all right Raphael. he's like dawn yeah. i need you to sing some can you sing a little bit we didn't have no paperwork no nothing i just love the track so much and i got in that studio and rifle love is the name of the song and i actually did that with him without getting paid again lesson was oh, not learned no. in the first place with lucy pearl yes 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 you have yes. a passion for music and when you hear yes. it you just go and it's just like you know what i mean but it's also a passion for Raphael. i love him yeah so much. He's yeah my brother. Like, I really... all around. you have yeah. you have a yeah. you, have, you have a good heart all around so yeah. um, thank you but it's the god in you <laughs> Sometimes you can be a good person to, to a default, to a fault, and you hurt yourself in the interim. So now I'm like, okay, let's get paperwork first before I do anything with anybody. Yeah. Paperwork first, Lala, because I, I finally learned you cannot just trust because someone says they care and they love you and this is going to be great. Yep, that's cool. I love it too. That's so cool. I agree with you. But let's get that mm. paperwork first. That's how I am now. Yes. I don't play. Yes. How many zeros is going to be? Yes. <laughs> Would you say you to say? How many zeros is going to be on this? <laughs> how many zeros? Exactly. How many zeros is going to be on this? <laughs> Yeah, and I need so more. I need at least three more than at least more exactly. than three. I need after at least more than three. three. After the first three, yeah. Uh, no, no. Right? So, I, absolutely, absolutely. I, I know now. It's really, it's really unfortunate because a lot of people are getting paid off for that Lucy Pearl album. Mm. A lot of people are getting paid off for Funky Divas and Born to Sing and Runaway Love albums and and um you know eb3 because i'm on that shit too and i'm not taking myself act like i wasn't a part of what i was of course um, but a lot we of people are being paid but they're not gonna they're gonna their judgment day is coming in other words mm -hmm. absolutely they're not gonna believe how big i get 
what exactly. God is going to do for me is abundantly and above and beyond anything I've ever seen. Girl, yeah, absolutely. you give mic, now you about to start preaching. I'm about to. <laughs> Somebody give me my wine and crackers. Wine and crackers. Exactly. Just, everything is coming full circle, though. Like, eventually, you'll see, like, you know, other artists coming in and work with you, you know, the yes. day Check that it out. Tamika, calls you. No, no, no. Listen to this. So, I told, um, who hit me up about the interview today? Um, Was it Denzel? Denzel. 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 I told mm-hmm. yes. him that yesterday I was literally on Google. Google on when you go to Google, my picture mm-hmm. picture was the first one to come up with an interview. And I awesome. one of the fans hit me last night. Yes, one of the fans hit me late last night. So that means that I was streaming, I guess, or I broke the internet, or yeah, yes. yeah, one of those. You I had was, a lot of people looking you up at once. Exactly. That's what that means. That's that was great people thing. on you. So it was that's amazing, thing. you guys. So that is thing. already. I'm telling you, when I say that I am grateful for all of the interviews that I've done, these 90 yeah. interviews have been life changing. It literally, oh my God, I was crying the other day because I was so overwhelmed. I said, I t- was telling my mom, I was in my car, I wasn't here at home, but when I got home, I was telling my mom that I was so overwhelmed that this is really catapulting me in a way that mm-hmm. I could not have paid for. I couldn't have planned this. It was like God was like, okay, this is the way you're going to get back in. And this is the way you're going to build your career back up brick by brick by brick on your own. Because when I say that I'm building, I'm, I'm booking these shows on my own. I don't have a, a publicist. So that's, and I don't have an assistant. So that's what I mean when I say on my own. <clears throat> and it's, it's really, everything is coming full circle the way it does when God is involved. Yes. You I better can't say that. God, I am about to cry. <laughs> oh my I just feel like that. I think that you probably felt like you were alone, and I was. You know, I was. With these with these ninety interviews that you've done, you can see oh. now that you was never alone. You yes. was never alone. Never exactly. Never. Exactly. And, never. exactly and, all, and it was just time me. for you to share your truth. It was time for yeah. you to share your truth, and you had to do that so that you could set yourself free. And there's people that don't even know what happened to you in exactly, in Vogue exactly. and exactly, in the exactly. world. Well, that's you know? what I'm getting from everybody. They keep saying, wow, we thought you just left. Like one minute we saw you with a couple albums and the next thing we know you weren't there and we just thought you left on your own. Then we saw you no. in Lucy Pearl and I was like, I didn't go solo because I did a, a, another album with a, a group. Yes. Maxine admitted to me, Maxine admitted that she said we were the ones to tell the fans that you left and just went on your own. We 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 put that out there, and I was like, "How could you do that when you knew that I left and did another group?" You know. And she's like, "Well, we were angry with you, and but why were you angry with me? I, was like, <laughs> I did nothing. Oh, you kicked me out. <laughs> exactly. Right. And I was just as broke as you guys. Like it didn't make sense. Like I don't. Yeah. So so I don't get it why that happened, but I know that it did, and I'm grateful because I would not be as strong as I am. I have noticed in life that not everybody is a warrior. Everybody can't walk together. Everybody's not willing to stand up and say, you know what? Uh Uh-uh. No more. No more. This is not cool. I'm not getting paid. Where's my money? Or don't do that to her. Don't say that to her. Don't say that to him. Don't treat him like that. Don't treat her like that. Those girls didn't have my back in that way. They didn't do that for me. So now I have to do that for myself. Absolutely. You know, I'm doing Absolutely. That for myself. But you guys, Absolutely. like like you said, Lala, I was gonna tie it in. All these interviews are letting me know people do want to talk to me. Oh my god. Yes. People are concerned with what what has happened to me after invoke. Oh my god, after Lucy Pearl. Oh yes. my god, thank you, Father, that everybody is interested in hearing my my story. They want to hear my side of things. I never got a chance to say it back in the day. So you're absolutely right, Lala. I did feel alone, but now I don't. Right, right, absolutely, no, absolutely, I do no, I do absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can play a part in making you feel like you're not alone. So yes, Devonte. And whether we was the first interview or the one hundred and tenth interview, you exactly. know, we're really glad that you know you came, you know, on our show and you're telling your story. Thank you, you know, so much. So yes. We can be a part and playing a part to get it out there. You know, like you said in the beginning, you know. 
whether we only have five followers or a thousand followers, you know, mm -hmm. we're just like I said, we're just glad that we can do our part to help spread the word. You know, and I'm grateful. I'm so. telling you, this could not have worked out better. If I paid for a publicist, they would have been like, okay, girl. Look, so wait a minute. You know, you've done 42 interviews by now, right? So you know, you got to pay me more because I don't have enough time in the day to book you. I mean, that's the way it would have been with a publicist. So. Yes. I think you guys, the request, um, they're starting to slow down now, which I'm grateful for, because I'm like, how can I, I still have about 80, oh, let me digress. I have about maybe 60 interviews to go. I swear to you. I'm booked until April 5th or 6th. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. That is amazing, Dawn. Now, I know that we're wrapping up. What I, I know that we right now I'm booking, I book a show, I book an interview, I take a day off, I book an interview, I take it because I have to get my book done. Yes. I have yes. other business and I can't do it by because I have to prepare. It takes me about three hours to get ready for an interview because I got to get the camera set up. I got to uh, open the window. I got to um, put on the lights because <laughs> I have lighting in here, a little bit of lighting. I got to do my makeup, do my hair, figure out what to wear for the day. I got to cut my oh, t-shirts up. I've cut so many t-shirts for this whole thing. Are you serious? Oh my God, yeah. This is a great t-shirt before I cut it. So I cut it today. Oh. I cut a v-neck in here. I see. <laughs> put them girls up. The girls are coming out the plane, honey. Them girls, bro. <laughs> oh, the girls are a little too much. Okay, right now they're getting bigger. I'm like Dawn. Oh my god, you are triple E's. Okay, I'm way too big. Oh, stop yeah. it. Yeah, I am. Well, Dawn, I am. You are welcome to come back on this show whenever you want to, whenever you have yeah, your, you whenever guys. your book comes out, you know, we're going to make sure that we pick it up and we read it. Please, like, please anything, have you back. Anything that you do, we're going to support you no matter what. We're going to, we're going to support so you now. Much. I love Most you guys definitely. for that. Um, I will be back anytime you want me. I appreciate that. I would love to come back because you guys have. Right. It's always hard to do an interview with so many people because you don't know who's talking. But mm -hmm. in this case, I could tell who was talking, and I especially because you would move a little bit when you're talking, so that helps too. Yes, but yeah. your point of view and, and how you see me, it's not just because you have my back and you're in Dawn's corner. I hate that talking in third person, but you know what I mean. You guys yes. see the truth of what has happened. You're not just um, blindly following me but you also understand exactly what i've been through and you've been watching mm -hmm. yes and so you get it and you're pe yeah. i love that the fans are piecing stuff together too there's a lot of interviews that i did over the years with the girls sitting right there maxine and i did an interview with access hollywood sean robinson maxine was sitting to my right sitting right here and i'm looking at her and i'm like well you know we weren't making enough money and the girls were this and that and they kicked me out she didn't say no we didn't dawn no, let me no no no. Let me let me fix that because she didn't she didn't uh, come in and contest anything, and I was sitting right there with her. So, and then there's another interview with all four of us, and Cindy was like, "I wish we would have listened to Dawn instead of just kind of kicking her out, you know, you know, little things or following the record company is how she put it because she wasn't willing to say we kicked her out." Yeah. But there's been times when I said even in uh, we were in London one time, and I want to say this was '91 early and vote days and the and the host of the show was like so dawn or ladies um would you date a bloke who was who was poor who didn't have money blah 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 and i was like well we're poor we're broke <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah My little goodness. things like that, that I do. Like, putting oh. pieces together i've been saying that for a very long time you know so um we did it we did an interview with um a pro called private sessions and <clears throat> it was about it's split up now split up now into like i don't know 10 pieces 10 parts and i said mm -hmm. she said well dawn you left the group and i didn't expect her to like single me out she's like well dawn so you left the group for a while um what happened with you you know what and i was like well you know i wasn't happy with the fact that we weren't making as money as much money now i didn't say straight up we were making two pennies a record Wow. But that's because I knew that the girls were sitting right there. And if I would have said that, it would have been like, okay, well, why weren't you guys also as upset as Dawn that you were only mm -hmm. making two pennies a record? Cindy, exactly. you were, that didn't bother you? Maxine, that didn't bother you? Terry, what about you? Because that's what would have happened. 
Mm. So I, I kind of played it off. I was I don't like confrontation either. So I kind of played it off as I didn't play it off. I just didn't say everything that I'm saying now because I was too afraid. I knew that the girls were going to fight me on it too because they wouldn't. They didn't want to look stupid that they stayed in the group even though they knew they were making two pennies a record. So why didn't you guys help me fight? Exactly. So say, well, how come you guys didn't help Dawn? Like you guys didn't feel the same way. You know what I mean? She would have probably brought them into that, not being messy, but of course, um, they of course. wouldn't have known how to answer that. Like, oh well, yeah, we were kind of okay with getting two pennies a record, you know. So thanks, you guys. Thank You're you. welcome. Dawn, before you leave, yeah. I just want to ask you, like, okay, I have two more questions. Do okay. you think there will probably be a movie about in vogue? And would you be yes. involved in it? There was yes, yes, Lala. Oh my god, yes. I don't want to do a biopic. I'm open if the right producers are on board, I guess. But to me, biopics don't give enough credence to the groups that we're seeing or the artists that we see. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely won't do Lifetime because they mess up everybody. Don't say. Like, no, we're, not about that we're not talking about that damn Christmas movie that they did, honey, at all. No. Exactly. Oh, I'm so glad I was a that. Um, but I, that and I also didn't like that they lied. Uh, left Lifetime lied and said, Lifetime. "Will the way that they were advertising it was um, they showed a picture of all four of us: Maxine, yes. Cindy, Terry, me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will the will the four members put aside their differences and come together to do this Lifetime movie? That's how they were. And I was like, oh no! Wow. I went down to TMZ that next day. That interview is on um, YouTube, and I went and I said, Harvey. Right, exactly. You know, uh, Lifetime is lying. What I don't like is when they lie to the fans. Because yeah. fans buy tickets for shows thinking that Cindy, Terry, Maxine, and Dawn are there. That yeah. all four yeah. of us are together. And so I don't like that. Um, and then right. when, you're, when you're not there, it makes it look like you, you're being no shady. Yes, yeah, like, no you're, like, you know, oh, well, forget them. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, she couldn't mm -hmm. bother you know I mean? to show up. She couldn't bother yeah, to show up. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Um. So I told Harvey, um, this was not my doing. I didn't know anything about it. Um, also, when the girls got inducted into, our dresses got inducted to the, uh, was it, not Hall of Fame, Dawn, um, the Smithsonian Institute for Never Gonna Get Addresses, they didn't call me a Maxine. When our dresses were inducted into the Black, the African American Smithsonian, which is right across the street from the other Smithsonian with the Never Gonna wow. Get Addresses, our red dresses wow. are, were inducted. They didn't call me a Maxine. You know, stuff like that. It's just Cindy and Terry are really nasty to me. And I think that they owe us. I can't speak for Maxine. I always do that, but she never speaks for me. So I'm only speaking for me right now. They right. owe me huge apologies. And it has to be sincere. Mm -hmm. And it has to be from the heart. And it has to be that they also vindicate me in front of the public eye. We did yeah. this to Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I was just about to say it should be public. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Everything else was public. It should be public. That's real. This is what we did to Don. Don, we tr tr apologize from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. You know, you're our sister. Let's exactly. put all this behind us and move forward. And I think things will go a lot smoother. Well, for everybody. Thing, if they don't, if they still have Rona, they still can't have me because I don't think mm -hmm. she should be there. Like I said, it's just a principle. It's principle with me now at this point. Yes. But Maxine and I tried to work together last year and I kept saying to Maxine, I need you to vindicate me. I need you to say, she basically vindicated me in that Sean Robinson, uh, Access Hollywood um, interview. She didn't have to say, well, yeah, Dawn is right. But by her not contesting me or not arguing with me about it, well, because I was sitting in a chair that was a little higher than hers. So I was looking down at her because of the way they had us seated. I was up here and she was kind of down here. So I was looking down at her and I was like, and so, you know, the girls kicked me out of the group and, and blah, blah, blah. And I was just upset that we weren't making enough money. And Maxine didn't say, well, that's not quite not how quite it happened. Quite or let me fill in the blanks there, Dawn. Can I just kind of take over the interview for a second? She didn't, she didn't deny anything. You feel me? Yeah. So that's how, that's why. Yeah. Wow. So I, that, she knew that I was right about what I did, what what happened, and that they were wrong for how they treated me. Yeah. Um, right. So there won't be a reunion until they actually come to me and and 
heart in their hands, really, you know, honestly, up front with me in the public yes. saying exactly what happened because I've been blessed. Yes. And my last question to you, Dawn. Uh oh. You went out, Boo. Lala? Yes. My last question to you is Would you ever create a girl group? Like, is that something you can. Oh, you guys, I think I have an interview. I'm sorry. I mean, a, a conference call today. That's why they're calling me. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no you're fine. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We love you. Yeah, I we love, love you. Love you. I'm so sorry. That's it's, okay. So it's okay. It's okay. We're blessed we're to have you for an hour and 25 minutes. Thank you, thank you so much, Dawn. You're welcome. Have me back, you guys. We'll finish Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep sure thing. Okay. 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 I swear I will. to you, thank I'll answer you it. so much, Don. Okay. You're really welcome. I love you guys. You're gorgeous. Love you too. Love you too. Love you too. Love you Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. We did it. 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 I can't go oh, oh, my God, y'all. I'm so excited, y'all. I was trying to keep it together, y'all. My titties was itching in my arms, too. I was like, oh, my God, it's done. Listen, I had to the whole time for the interview. Listen, I, had to sit, I had to, oh, my God. I got the key. Okay. Got the key. <laughs> okay, go. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I'm this was like, amazing. <laughs> we kept it together. We kept it polished. Oh God! I was like, oh, this lady gotta hurry up and go before I lose my mind. I'm about to flip out. It is Dawn Robinson. I don't even think she realized how amazing she is. But she said she would come back on our show. She actually had yes. fun. So she had a manager. Good time. Manager, we oh, need to book. I, I do apologize. For what? Can you cut so an edit this? I can cut this if Please you want me to. We're done. Okay. Edit. Um, we we so. went all completely off the script because we haven't wrapped the show up yet. <laughs> so I uh, know I haven't. I haven't ended it yet. So no, you. Okay, fine. so y'all, that was Dunn Robinson of In Bulk. Oh my God. Oh my God. And Lucy Pearl. So, as y'all seen, Lucy Pearl. Oh my God, it's a, a Lucy Pearl. Um. So as y'all seen, she had to run. She had a conference call, but she will be back, and we cannot wait. Hopefully, she'll we be back soon. And even when her book is released, hope we can have her back for that as well. Absolutely. Yes. Ourselves and Miss Dawn Robinson and the celebration of Tamika being the yes. royal. We love that you're here. We have arrived. We have arrived. We have the show, and we absolutely love it. So yes. So guys, listen. You know she's gonna be back on the show. So make sure that you guys comment your questions. Give us questions that you want us to ask her because she's coming back. All right. You know, and we can also shout you out if you like to, you know. Right. But I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions today because we was gonna ask her about envious and uh we was gonna ask her about R and B divas too. Uh, we, we was just trying to go in order so that way exactly. she wouldn't have to backtrack what she was talking about. We didn't want right. to skip ahead right. to all of that, you know. But you know, I think envious came before or after Lucy Pearl. So after Lucy Pearl. Uh, mm -hmm. So and I really did want to know if she was going to build a, a group of her own, if she would be willing to do a girl group of her own. I was getting ready for my um, <clears throat> is ready to my vocal debut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready, and then she was like, "Oh, the fucking call," and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> that was on on. <laughs> so you're about to juggle the L and D show and being in a girl group. That's what you're about to do. Yeah, <laughs> completely possible. <laughs> I'm just glad that we're not together. I'm just glad okay. that we're not together. Because exactly. you would have pushed me out this seat like Devontae pushed me out the seat. <laughs> 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 I 
fucking one. Okay, you can move, bitch. This is my time, okay? Go on this one. Hey, girl. Lord have mercy. Jesus. You know, oh my God, that was so epic, though. I'm so proud, oh, happy, so and, epic. you know, so that she was able to tell her story and people were able to actually listen and get the truth Absolutely. about it. Dawn is not a diva in that way. She is a not diva as far way. as her being iconic, yes, but as far as her heart. being in personality, she has a great heart. As you see, she yes. is very warm hearted. She's very down to earth, easy to talk to. She's not uh, one of those, I don't, I, I can't tell my business. Uh, she was really yeah. open and that was very it, that you made for a very good interview. Like, you do not find artists, you do not find stars yeah, like man. That. that's that's very, very unique. I mean, and you know, so like and that's what I was saying, you know, like she said, whether people only have like 14 followers, you know, or right. you know numbers. I mean, we're still building our platform and we're trying to get there. And yeah. for her for her to give us the opportunity. <laughs> Lord, love it. Love That's it. everything. You also, know. Let's give it up to our manager, Denzel, who also yeah, big up. Yes. Big up. Big up to our oh manager. My. Thank you so much. Yes. And I'm so sure you have many more good bookings to come. And um, yes. we appreciate you, manager. We do. We really appreciate you. We really do. We really you really appreciate Can't wait to have her back on the show. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We cannot wait to have you know. If y'all want to come on the show, express yourselves, talk about anything you want to talk about. Yourself, you know, yeah. This is this is the place to the do open it. Platform. We're, not, we're, not messy. Yeah. we're not messy. We will listen. We will give you know our advice if needed. But at the end of the day, if you want to come on the show, you're welcome to come on. Just talk to our manager Denzel first before you do, honey, because you can't step to us. Can't step, yeah, can't step there. <laughs> 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 no, we're gonna send you right to Denzel. We're gonna send you okay. right over to our manager. So, yeah. Lord, right over. I'll end that. What'd you right say to me? What'd you say we to me? We're gonna send you right over to our manager. <laughs> I'm sorry. Before, Were you saying something to me? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you can't talk to me. You gotta talk to him. You well, gotta talk to him, right? You gotta, you gotta go yeah. through Matthew Knowles. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh go. my gosh! This was good. This was really good, and I'm sure that um everybody. I'm hoping that everybody got a, a good glimpse of what you know went on with her. Lala, give me a second. I just want to let you know how well you are blended, boo. My God! Thank you, baby. I tried. Okay, you came on here I for going for real, bro. I'm like, my God, yes. For this glow, I'm living for it. Yes, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm so was rudely interrupted by her, her, her uh, beings. Um, yeah, I just can't. I can't wait to have her back. You know, I can't either. I can't either. Yeah, my best friend just sent me twenty five dollars just because. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh. Well, share the weapon. If five. you want to send me anything, my cash app is. Big shout out, big shout out to my best friend Sharice Gray Wesley for just showing up and showing out when she does. Oh my god, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, shout out to all of my family and friends who are watching as well. Mm. Mama, we had Miss Dawn Robinson from In Vogue on our show. Like, oh gosh. That's Everybody, all everybody who's been supporting us, you know, this is a season, for me, you know, and we're glad to be back, even during this pandemic and everything. Um, you know, we'll go into everything that's been going on with us behind the scenes, off camera, and everything in the next episode because this episode was just, just all done, Robinson, and there's no way now, to just let y'all know. Just to let y'all know, the next shows is not gonna be day shows, okay? Okay, night shows. <laughs> it's gonna be a regular time at eleven or so. Night shows. You know, but this right here was specifically for Miss Robinson. She actually yeah. selected the date and the time because she is she's a busy woman. You know, she's a, she said she didn't she have a problem. She's doing this on her own. And signs, honey. Don't you she's ever forget it. 
big ups for us being number 90, though, on her list. Number 90. That's what I said. Oh, I don't, we don't we care. Really we don't care don't if I was the first one or the thousands. You're talking to me. Just and as long as I got, got me too, you, I got good. To us. Honey. Just the fact yeah. that she wanted to talk to us is, you right. know, a blessing. Exactly. Oh. She was a blessing. You know, yeah. so. Oh, I'm well, excited. Right. Guys, right. season four has officially started. This is episode one of season four. So we have more shows to come. And don't worry, we are going to, you know, talk about shits, okay? Yeah. We're going to definitely talk about shit, especially with Salt and Pepper and Spinderella. Hello. This is oh. Spinderella deal. Somebody had to spin y'all record. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. But we're going to save that for the next show, guys. So, big ups to all of us. Denzel, thank you so much. Miss Robinson, we wish you the best. And we cannot wait to have you back on the show again. With that being said, I'm your girl, Lala. I'm Devante. I'm this. I'm Tamika. And we love you. You guys have a blessed day, night, morning, wherever you are when this video finds you. We love you. Bye. 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 Yeah, are you still recording? Do we just close it up? <laughs> are yes, we recording yes. too? Did you just, was he recording? Is he is he downloading it? <laughs> are you so <laughs> Y'all give me a second. Y'all stay right there where y'all at. Ugh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>